Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soraya with you today at the Palos Verdes Art Center. I am now joined by Scott Canty and you are here as the curator of a new exhibit, yes. uh, Palettiers and Photography. Yes. And of course my first question is going to be, what is a Palettier? <laughs> a Palettier yes. is uh, a group of artists that got together about 1950 and they're basically housewives. They got together, they're artists and they uh, needed some kind of a camaraderie so they they met at homes and then I think around 1960 they formed a group called the Palettiers and they joined the Art Center and they've been one of our support groups since 1960. Interesting and we're gonna actually meet some of them coming up in yes. just a little while, a couple of the ladies and you and I had a brief chance to talk and I want to get into this a little bit more because it seems like for a long time you know women were not the ones that were allowed to be yes. artistic, especially going back 40 years ago. Right. You know, they were the, the homemakers, or right. they were working moms or, or working yes. wives. And later in life, they've discovered all of this sure. talent. I think uh, we're all, we all have hidden artists within, the, within, within us. Yeah. And I think uh, during the time when they were, they had to be the professionals, yes. they had to be the moms, and they, they did that career, and I think Later in life, they decided, I'm going to take a painting class, and then they find out that they have this amazing talent. Some of them were professional artists. Some of them painted while they were watching their kids or came and painted after they worked all day. But um, that's what's unique about this group is that they have this um, drive to mm -hmm. continue being artists, whether it, they are in a commercial gallery selling their work or just doing it for the love of art. So that's what's it's refreshing. Absolutely. It's not this commercial, you know, I gotta paint and sell. They don't really care, they just do it for the love of art. Now how do you decide what gets selected to be in the gallery? To be in well, the Well, uh, this particular exhibition is, um, we're here in the mall because, you know, we're going through construction right. at the major, uh, um, the major art center. Mm -hmm. But um, I decided that I was gonna focus on the eight artist groups okay. that make up the, that one of the support organizations of the Art Center and one of them is the Palettiers and next time it might be Peninsula Artists and so I'm just focusing on these groups before we lose the members. Okay. Do you look at an array of pictures and decide which photos you want or which paintings? Well in this or? particular show every art, every member brought in two pieces Okay. and they asked me to curate the show yeah. but once everything got in I just laid out the show and it all worked together. Usually I pick work out of the exhibit but mm -hmm. this time we accepted everything so in conjunction with that then I curated the this photography exhibit right and let's talk about that because I know there's some amazing pictures here that are very sure. unique and different well this show um, everybody's on Facebook right right of course right <laughs> so what I decided to do is uh, to make my to contact the artists and people that I know that are on Facebook and so I just went, I have about 1,800 friends, and I just... Do you know them all personally? <laughs> most of them I do, yeah, wow, because they're most, most of them are artists. Most of them I've shown before or exhibited some fashion. So I just went there and I selected artists that I liked. So that's what I did, is I chose five artists out of my Facebook context. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it's different. <laughs> that's it's, an interesting it's way. It's cheating, <laughs> but it, it was fun because it... it allowed me to use that media mm -hmm. in a different way rather than just being a social media. Right. It allowed me to actually contact them on Facebook and say, would you like to be in this exhibition? What is your toughest job as a curator? Uh, selecting art, yeah. making sense of what you're doing, uh, finding a theme that's, that's uh, interesting for other people to understand and to look at. Art mm -hmm. could be very bizarre and very uh, esoteric. True. So I'm trying to I'm trying to bring art to to the well, especially here at South Bay. I'm trying to bring LA artists here okay. that have a different sense ability about making art, but also at the same time something that artists or people could come and look at the exhibition and get a sense of oh, I like that. Okay, it's interesting to me when you when you go to select a picture or a group of pictures. Is it a feeling that comes out eventually, saying this is exactly what I want or this Sometimes, is how I want it? Sometimes, yeah. or I'll have a theme. Uh, like this show, it not necessarily came up with a theme, but there is a lot of nature-based work and work that deals with relationships. Okay. So it just happened to come out that way. But I just look at good work mm -hmm. and I decide 
I pick one person and then that person leads me to another person and then I just keep going that way. Now, for you, what is your favorite art? Everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah, I like everything. As long as it makes a message okay. and, it, and it's, it has enough mystery behind it that I really don't get the whole story, mm -hmm, but, I, but it helps me put some pieces together and then helps me fantasize about what it could be in my sense. Because when you tell the whole story, that's boring. Right. I want to I want to be able to interject what I think. So that's what I like about art. It sometimes it could tell you the story and sometimes it it leaves it undone. You can finish the story yourself. That's right, and that's what I like. Very good. Yeah. Okay, we're going to actually look at some of the um, the work of the artists here, and then we're not going to show you everything because we want you to come down. Of course, um, the exhibit yes. is going to run. That would be through August 12th, so you have some time to get out here and look at this uh, these, this great work that we have here. So let's take a little bit of a look. Sure. We'll walk around. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And now, Scott, tell us a little bit about this artist, uh, Bob Francis. So this is Bob Francis, and. Um, why I chose his work is because there's another artist that's in the exhibition named Ed Martin. Okay. And they have a common sort of practice in how they make art. They, they use a scanner to create the artwork rather than a, a camera. Interesting. And you know, photography is based on light, so a scanner has a source of light. And what Bob does is he just lays down these leaves, and I think they're from a, a lily plant. Interesting. He lays them on a scanner scans it and then he goes into Photoshop and can develop it further. So this is basically an, a digital print wow. as opposed to you know taking a photograph with a camera and developing it. That's sort of like doesn't happen anymore yeah. except there's one photographer who still develops her film. Wow. Uh, this is a poster that we printed here at the Art Center to announce the exhibition but this is another example of Bob's work. So Ed um, is a little different than uh, Bob um, Ed is a cinematographer from way back when he's you know shot lots of movies so he knows a lot about light mm -hmm. and he was telling me that uh, this is a piece that was scanned with a scanner okay. and um, he manipulated the scanner so that instead of being a, a flat light he taped off one section of the light bulb so it would only show a shadow so it, it would create more shadow so his work has a little more depth to okay. it. Um, so this was created by using an enlarger. Okay. And he developed a tray where you put the objects on top of a tray, fill it with oil. And the oil, what it did was saturate the material and, and it would, the light would carry through the plants. So then he would light it up with the regular um, enlarger light and then it would project the image right on the paper or on the negative. And then he'd have that developed. All right, and Scott, now we're talking about Anthony Castro, and this tells yes. a story. Well, Anthony um, has a unique story to himself, um, how, he, how he grew up and how he was sort of um, left by his family, and then he had to raise himself. So he has a real connection with people that are kind of, they feel isolated and uh, separate from society. So what he did is he meets these people on social networks and he asked them, hey, can I come and take your photograph in your environment? So he has this connection and, and it's about their story. And by photographing them in their environment, one could also look at it and start to make a narrative about what this person's about. Again, it's one of those situations where you don't you only know part of the story, so right. you have to sort of think the rest of it. Right. There's a mystery about mm -hmm. these works. Right. So when I saw his work, it sort of intrigued me about this other photographer named Meg Madison, who we're going to go look at, okay. who, who um, purposely leaves things off to let you finish the story wow. in your own way. Rather than you telling the whole story, she wants you to finish it. She gives you the, the beginning, but you finish it. So Meg, uh, what she's done here is she's started this story. What she does is she puts the seeds of uh, a narrative in our minds and then as we look at it we fill it in about what it, what it's about that's right it's very same with this provoking. here you mm -hmm. know this could be a hallway in a senior citizen home or something mm -hmm. and then you see this group of people uh, kind of looking like it was through a, a hole in a door mm -hmm. like is someone in one of these rooms looking through a peephole at people Somebody talking watching. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so um, 
And same here, you know, an outside scene and maybe a hotel room. Um, I know that she said that she took these photos while she was in New York. So, of course, this is a New York scene. But um, it's this whole idea, like Anthony's work, about the narrative. Right. To tell a story and to have the viewer kind of bring it together. Uh, and yet every time somebody maybe would come to your home or a new person and see something like this, they would create a story sure. or say, what was yeah. this? When did you shoot this? Or when did right. you take this? Or they may say, hey, I was there. I saw that, you know. Exactly. And then then becomes this dialogue. Uh, so that that's what I like about these two artists is that the difference between Ed Martin and Bob Francis is that it's a flower. Right. It's, it's like a botanical study. But these take you a little further and question like what is this all about why why are they why is this group standing here and there's no one in that picture and that kind of thing now does Meg only shoot black and white this is very different this she does do color but this well what's nice about it is uh, it doesn't allow color to dictate the story no. right so if you know it, it's timeless you don't know when these photos were taken mm -hmm. uh, it could have been 50 years ago right or yesterday or yesterday yeah. yes Okay, and then now here we are with something completely different on the side. Yes, these are works by uh, Anita Bunn. And what intrigued me about her work is just the, the philosophy, philosophy of how she photographs. Um, digital photography is like I could take 100 photos of you moving, whatever. Right. With her, she waits for the perfect moment even though she has a digital camera and she could shoot a thousand pictures in one shot, she has a tripod and she goes out at night with, with someone with her and she goes to some seedy neighborhoods, but she'll be driving and she'll see a tree and says, I'm gonna come back and photograph that tree at night. So these are all done at night and she sets her tripod up and she waits for that moment when a cloud passes by or so she's very stingy about her photography. And um, so the results are these beautiful pieces that are just exquisite. And then they're digitally reproduced. She then has a, um, a film put over them to keep them kind of a matte texture. Oh, okay. And um, this was like, for instance, this was just shot with a street light. Amazing. And it's this silver kind of quality that the plant reflects the light. It's really beautiful. And then over here, you get this purple cloud. Very interesting. Yeah. And I noticed this one over here as well. I mean, the, the sky yes. looks very black in this photo. And the green just looks amazing. And so the only light that is being, that's on the tree that you could see it is, could be a distant street light mm -hmm. or it could be lights of a car. But she doesn't bring a light and shine it on the tree. It's, it's the light that's in the area. So she's truly just waiting, like you said, for the moment right. when it all comes together. Now what's interesting about her work is if you look at it, it's very square. So she's very influenced by painters. Mm, okay. You know, where other photographers, if you look at their work, it's very standard pho photographic kind of pres presentation. But her work is, she's really inspired by painting. You could see the way her format is. Yeah, very true. 